could it drive even better possibly than my Golf GTI TCR, making it the best Golf I've ever driven. Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video. Now you've probably heard it a million times from me. If I had to choose between a Golf GTI TCR and a Golf R, I would always choose the TCR. That's because I find it a much more exciting car to drive. But say a Golf R had been subject to £10,000 worth of modifications from some of the best tuning companies in the world that deal with the standard car's weaknesses in the areas of the brakes, the suspension, the engine and the gearbox. Could that potentially make it a more enjoyable car to drive than the Golf GTI TCR and therefore make it the best Golf I've ever driven? Well, that's what we're going to find out today with this 2015 Golf R you see here. The owner who developed the car over about five years took it religiously to Awesome GTI store, spent £10,000 with them on some of the best products that you can buy for a Golf R. And I've got that car right here today to see if possibly a Golf R could be the best Golf I've ever driven. Before we get started, I just want to say once again a big thank you to the guys here at Jilks's Garage Cafe in the village of Kyneton in Warwickshire for letting me film on their site on a day on which they are closed. Do not worry, they are still open during lockdown, Wednesdays to Sundays, 9 till 3 on a takeaway basis, and then on Friday nights and Saturday nights they do pizzas and burgers, again, on a takeaway basis, but they also do local delivery. Right, now... Let's have a look at this crazy Golf R. Okay, I've got a spreadsheet here that kind of lists everything that was spent on the car. It's actually £11,000, not £10,000. So let's start at the top then with the Racing Line Big Brake Kit, which with pads cost £2,184. That's a lot of money, but these are a lot of brake. So we've got two piece discs, I'm not sure how big they are, I reckon they're probably like 380. They're grooved, we've got a lovely blue caliper, I'm sure with lots and lots of pistons. If you run the standard wheels you do need to fit spacers. The buyer of this car did a deal with me where he had these Oz Omnia wheels off my TCR and I had his Pretorias and amazingly these cheap Oz wheels which are a couple of hundred pounds each clear the calipers nicely there's a good few mil there so that's great okay next up we have APR boost hose and muffler delete with labor which is 444 pounds can't show you that can't really show you the APR, APR intercooler either which was 900 pounds with labor but it's in there somewhere we've also got a turbo technics inlet pipe which was 190 pounds I can show you that there big thick silicon one then no Funny colours, nice subtle black, as you can see. Cosmetically, apart from the wheels, this car is 100% standard. We have at the back the BCS power valve exhaust. I suppose this is a bit different, but we've still got the four pipes, they're still round. They're now a bit more subtle, being black. And got some nice stainless steel under there, which is still in good condition. It's not brand new by any means. That cost £1,426. So yeah, a lot of money, but again, a lot of exhaust. I'll put some footage now on so you can hear what it sounds like. We have got an APR downpipe just there. You can actually see it says APR on it. I'll just warm up a bit on it because it's freezing today. Mm, that's nice. We've got a racing line catch tank to catch breather vapour rather, rather than it being recycled in the engine because when these are, are mapped, you produce a lot of that and it's not good for the engine to have to burn it. So it's in there. It actually reduces the octane. So that's good. That gets uh, emptied at a service. We have the racing line washer bottle relocation kit so yeah that's gone somewhere
Not sure where. But that's probably the screen wash, yeah. That's what that is then, I know. Just learnt maths. And then we have the labour on that as well, so that's £1,502. Because it's running more power and more boost, we've got some special NGK race plugs, which cost £182. It's had a few sets of those. Tucked underneath the car, we have the Bilstein B16 coilover kit. I can show you that because it's yellow and you can probably see that. Let's see, yep. Maybe you can also see down there a little plug connection. You know that what that means, don't you? This car originally left the factory with dynamic chassis control and this very clever Bilstein kit maintains it. So it's still got the three modes, comfort, normal and race on a coilover kit. How cool is that? Well, we'll find out how effective it is when we go and drive the car. You probably can't see in there a super pro anti-roll bar, 24 millimeters. And we've also got super pro camber top mounts, which give it an extra 1.4 degrees of negative camber. You can probably see it there. So the top of the wheel is tucked into the arch a little bit more. And that really, really does increase the front end grip and was key to the Club Sport Air setting the front wheel drive lap record at the Nürburgring back in 2016. Volkswagen did it in a different way. They reshaped the hubs, but this is a much easier, cheaper way of doing it. Although they actually can be quite noisy. All that, all the suspension stuff costs just under two and a half thousand pounds. For 1500 pounds, we have an APR. So they're a big American tuning company, one of the best in the world. They've remapped the engine and the gearbox. So it's now 395 horsepower. I think 553 newton meters of torque and we've got the racing line intake so this was one of the first mods the guy did when he got the car in 2015 at about 7,000 miles racing line intake there and yeah now the gearbox map means that manual mode is much more of a manual mode and they've also increased the clutch pressures to make it work better with that kind of power and torque so it doesn't slip and finally, we have the GFB diverter valve for £113. You should be able to just see it there. I've never heard of GFB before, but for them to be on this car, they must be a pretty good make. And that explains the subtle dump valve chatter coming from under the bonnet. It's not chavvy and annoying like the Forge one on the GTI, so don't worry about that. But if you don't like it, there is another way you can set the valve and then it's totally quiet. The reason you change the diverter valve is to make the car more responsive in between gear changes. So with that, we have a total of £10,927 and 95p. That is a lot of money, but to be fair, that is a lot of work. But does it make this car drive any better? And could it drive even better possibly than my Golf GTI TCR, making it the best Golf I've ever driven? Well, let's go and find out. Okay, before we get down to the fun bit, testing this 395 horsepower Golf R to see how crazy it can be, let's just back it off first, put it into comfort mode, because the clever Bilstein suspension still gives us the DCC this car left the factory with, so we've got comfort, normal and race mode for the dampers. Now, in comfort mode, it's still quite hard. It feels harder than a normal Golf R with DCC in race mode. I think that's just the nature of coilovers. There's a lot of surface texture coming through to me as the driver. And that kind of makes you think it's going to be awful. But actually, as you pick up speed, it gives it something to work with. And it does actually soften off a bit. And it's not too bad. I think I probably could actually live with it. We'll put it into race mode later and see what it can really do. Um, onto the exhaust then. Though generally exhaust can actually ruin a car because they can just be so loud and boomy and embarrassing. A bit like the non-resonated Miltec on the Up GTI back in the summer. That was a hideous exhaust. The owner told me that he went for the BCS power valve on this car because it wasn't boomy on motorways. And that's true, I've tested it on a motorway. It's actually really quiet. And just pottering along now, it's not embarrassingly loud. It's got some character, but it's not too intrusive. The beauty of these exhausts, I assume, is that they don't, they're not loud all the time. They only sort of get louder when you press the throttle beyond a certain point, which we all shall do now. So that's probably about halfway down and you can feel, you can hear there, it kind of wakes it up. That's in comfort mode. 
it's kind of loud in race mode as well maybe a little bit louder but you get some pops and crackles which are a bit Audi R8-ish they're very sort of programmed the ones on the TCR and the Club Sport S are a bit more unpredictable but this is pretty predictable but hey we like pops and crackles and they're not stupidly loud or embarrassing like they can be on some cars so that's really good I think that's probably the APR map doing that so that's pretty pretty good yeah I mean you know it isn't an in-your-face kind of car to drive and the outside of it reflects that big ups to the guy who modified this he resisted making any cosmetic modifications at all I actually fitted the wheels and tires to it it was still on the original Pretoria so he put some spaces on them to give it some starts but actually everything on it is completely as it left the factory it was just looking tougher because it's lower and it had spaces on it with the Pretorias but they were to clear actually the brakes which we will come to shortly right let's put it into race mode now then so yeah we're in race okay let's talk about the engine and the gearbox then so we have been remapped <laughs> we've got a fair bit more power the beauty of mapping a modern car is that emissions regulations don't matter modern cars are mapped to do well in emissions tests and that kind of softens the response with a non-factory map that still complies to the law in the UK you get a much better response so yeah well, it's not really worth it's not really worth saying much about the engine because it's ridiculously quick it feels amazing it feels like the standard engine just uncorked let's talk about the gearbox then so two good things about it put it into manual mode we have a proper manual finally the rs3 is a bit like this so you can i'm a foot to the board we're not kicking down i'm going to put it into six now foot to the board no kick down it's just riding the torque i miss that with all dsg but we've got it and the other thing is it won't change up at the rev limiter it is a proper manual mode now so let's just prove that it's on the rev limiter why can't they do that to other cars i think golf r mark 8 now has got that but my tcr on track it wasn't particularly good because of that the other reason it wasn't particularly good was because it did understeer so we've got a thicker anti-roll bar on the back we've got camber adjust top mounts on the front so they give a little more negative camber the difference on this car is just surreal it's not a light car the conditions aren't great but you can turn it in like this at such a speed and it just doesn't really feel like it's trying and that's because we've got more tyre on the road and we've got some excellent tyres for these kind of conditions Goodyear Eagle F1 asymmetric fives I've been running those on my Golf GTI TCR for six months now from the summer to the winter and they just grip and grip and grip they are the best tyre I've ever driven on I'd love to do back-to-back -back tests with Pilot Sport 4S's because I can't imagine how the Michelin's going to be better especially on a day like today and the brakes yeah Golf R's don't have particularly big brakes for the performance they can overheat very very quickly even on the road but these will do track days and everything they are amazing yeah mm. oh yes I do remember what I had for breakfast wheat sticks right Oh, the hazards have come on <laughs> that's how good the brakes are let's turn those off right let's just do a quick launch then uh, there's nothing around and let's just put it into race yeah I'm not going to use launch control because I don't think you should here we go that's 60 miles an hour yeah that's um, quite easily the most exciting Golf R I've ever driven is it the most exciting Golf 
I've ever driven. Well, it's been a very interesting day with this modified Golf R. You probably know by now I've never been a big fan of the standard car because it makes going fast too easy and that makes it a little bit boring. This is completely different though. It may be faster still than the standard car, but the way it goes about its business is much, much more exciting. For a start, we've got more power, more torque, we've got more response. We've got an exhaust tone that now finally suits a car like the Golf R. None of that stupid, stupid fakery. We've got some of the best suspension in the business by Bill Stein that very, very cleverly integrates DCC to give you comfort and poise, whatever suits the mood. We've also got brakes that would stop a steam train. This is one incredible package and okay, 11,000 pounds is not a small amount of money, but just consider this. These cars are now changing hands in the trade for about £10,000. That means soon you'll be able to buy one for that. Put another £10,000, £11,000 worth of modifications onto that. For £21,000, you're going to get the best Golf I've ever driven. This is the best Golf I've ever driven. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this Volks Wizard video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Please do comment. Please do share it and please as ever subscribe and I'll see you for the next one very soon.